The SSL18 from Solid State Logic offers a plethora of I.O., the ability to insert hardware effects into the signal chain, has DC coupled outputs for your synths, has an audio console inspired software, talkback and allegedly best in class audio performance. Hey Julian Krauss here and in this video I will tell you all you need to know about the SSL18, check out what makes this interface so special and also check out the audio quality. Full disclosure, I bought this interface with my own money, period. Ok, without further ado, let's jump right in. Starting on the left you get two multipurpose mic, line and instrument inputs. Right next to them there are eight gain knobs for a total of eight analog inputs. For each channel there is also a selection button, which you guessed it, selects a channel and then you got further functions available. That's over to the right and here you can find phantom power, a line level switch, a 75Hz high pass filter and the 4K mode. 4K has nothing to do with your TV's resolution and gets the name from the legendary 4000 series console. Audio sample and what exactly this mode does to your audio later in the video. In the middle of the SSL18 you can find a display that shows you the input level of your channels and a couple more functions. You can also see your main output levels and things like sample rate. Then there's a knob for the main output volume control which importantly goes all the way up to 11. That's one more than 10. Below that you can find a cut button which mutes the main output, an alt button which lets you switch to a second pair of studio monitors and a talk button to activate the talkback. With the SSL18 you also get two headphone outputs with individual volume controls and one of the most satisfying power buttons of all the interfaces that I've tested so far. No, seriously, with the 250 grams of activation force and tactile latching, and yes, I did totally measure that, the power button feels like enabling a feature in a cockpit of an airplane. The LED illumination is just the icing on the cake here. Have I mentioned that I'm a huge fan of quality power switches on audio interfaces? You might have noticed. Anyways, switching to the back you get seven additional XLR slash TRS inputs of which one of them is dedicated to the talkback mic. I like that this is a separate channel and you do not lose an additional input. On the back you can also find 10 balanced outputs which also have a trick up their sleeves. If you don't need output 9 and 10 they can be switched into sense for channel 1 and 2 which you can route to outboard sound equipment like a compressor and then bring the signal back with the two returns. Pretty handy to have. Then you get two optical in and optical outputs which can be used with SPDIF or ADAT. With the latter you can extend the SSL18 by up to 16 inputs and 16 outputs at a sample rate of 48 kHz. With higher sample rates this number drops and that's a limitation of ADAT and similar to other interfaces. You also get two SPDIF inputs in the form of RCA connectors and a MIDI in and output. Not sure if it was because of space constraints, but SSL has chosen a 3.5mm connector here instead of the more popular DIN connector. Just be aware that you might need to have an adapter or breakout cable if you want to use the MIDI ports. You also get a USB-C connector to connect the interface to your PC, a word clock to sync additional devices and a power connector. Of course I couldn't resist and had to have a quick peek inside the SSL18 and Solid Logic has not skimmed on the components. The analog to digital conversion is mostly done by the ESS ES9842 Pro and the digital to analog side is covered by ES9017s. There is one lonely Cirrus Logic CS4272 on the board which is a more lower end chip and I think it is only doing the talkback stuff. The rest are high quality converter supporting SSL's claim of best in class audio performance. But we'll see about that in the measurements. Quick note on the build quality, if the premium power button was any indication the SSL18 feels really well built. The whole housing is made out of metal and the knobs turn smoothly. One thing to be aware of is that the SSL18 is primarily designed to be used in a rack. You can use it on a desk but the rack ears are an integral part of the front plate and might get in the way sometimes. So in a rack this thing really feels at home and it's the easiest to use. Now do you want to know how to properly use your audio interface and record, mix and master your songs like a true professional? Then check out this video sponsor Hofer College. Hofer College is an international online academy for audio engineering and music production. With the Hofer courses you get access to a lot of in-depth knowledge to grow your expertise in the audio field. In the Hofer online campus you can learn whenever and wherever you want and with the completion of the online courses you also get a corresponding certificate. With Hofer it's also possible to earn a diploma or bachelor's degree in audio engineering. I checked out their courses myself and I really like the inclusion of audio samples in their learning material to get a better understanding of a specific topic. Depending on the chosen course you also get to work on audio projects 
which you send to the Hofer College team and they will give you direct feedback on your assignment. Besides the courses, the Hofer College has lots of educational videos ranging from audio fundamentals all the way to advanced mastering techniques. The Hofer courses are available in German and English and Hofer was kind enough to provide me with a discount code for you to use with their courses. So if you're just getting started and want to dive deeper into the professional audio world or you want to pursue a career in audio engineering and music production, check out Hofer College with the links in the description. Okay, let's have a look at the audio quality of the mic inputs as this is one of the bigger reasons to buy a quality audio interface. First up, frequency response, which indicates if all frequencies are recorded equally well. And I have to say, that's absolutely the case here as you can see a very straight line across the graph, even at the maximum gain setting. When turning down the gain, this gets even more perfect. It doesn't really get much better than that. In case you're wondering what the high pass filter does, it looks like this. Sadly, the high pass filter is only digital, so it does not prevent your signal from clipping with excessive low frequency noise, like a true analog filter. But it's still nice to have. Now I tease at the 4K mode in the beginning and here you can see what it does. It elevates the whole signal by about 2 decibels with an additional boost in the higher frequencies. I'm gonna be honest, I would have liked to see just the boost in the highs and not the whole range lifted up. Because this means that the 4K mode is 2 dB louder and this can often trick you into thinking that it sounds better when in fact it's just louder. SSL, I don't think you need this kind of trickery. Besides the high frequency boost, the 4K mode also adds saturation and you can see that here. Without the 4K mode, here in blue, you can see that the distortion is minimal and in my opinion completely inaudible. But with the 4K mode, the distortion rises significantly and you should already hear this in my voice as I've just turned on the 4K mode. This is how it sounds and with the combination of treble boost and additional saturation, the audio gets a bit more gritty. As always, a warning, make sure that you like the effect before recording with it, as there's no way to remove it in case you change your mind later. 4K mode off again and let's talk about noise, because that's obviously not what you want in your recordings. To show you a worst case scenario, here I'm talking into an SM7B, which is a really bad mic when it comes to signal strength and it has to be amplified a lot. This brings out the noise of the preamps, so let me be quiet for you to hear the noise law of this setup. This is essentially as good as it gets without breaking the laws of physics. And that's not allowed here. Yeah, you can see that this is a top performer, which is really great. Here's the noise slightly boosted and compared to other interfaces. Because of the low noise and the fact that the SSL18 provides a decent amount of gain, there is really no need for a fat clouder with this interface. To close out the mic section, let's have a look at the dynamic range, which is more important when you're recording with condenser mics. Dynamic range is the ratio of the strongest sound the interface can capture and its noise floor, and you want this to be as high as possible to have minimal noise. The good news is that the SSL18 performs exceptionally well with 119.5 dB of dynamic range. There are only two other interfaces I've measured so far that outperform the SSL18, and they do this by by switching ranges or using multiple ADC stages. The SSL18 does not use these tricks and still delivers a dynamic range more than you would ever need. As of today, this is a state-of-the-art performance. Great job, solid state logic. As so often, the line level inputs perform very similarly to the mic inputs, so I'm just flipping through a couple of graphs in the background. But in short, the distortion of these inputs is inaudible, dynamic range is once again excellent and the frequency response is ruler flat. Nothing more to say than nice. By the way, the TRS line inputs bypass the preamps according to SSL, and that's the reason you only get about 17 dB of gain range. Maybe that's only an attenuation, not quite sure. But that also means that running the signal into the return input directly has the same excellent audio quality as going through the line inputs. Let's have a look at the outputs, because they are also quite special. As you can see, the frequency response is ruler flat, which at this point I would have expected nothing else. But it also stays ruler flat down to DC, which means that you can use these outputs to control your synthesizers with control voltage. And that's true for all outputs, even the headphone outputs, which I will get to in a second. Distortion levels are also very low and in my opinion completely inaudible. The nice part about the outputs is that you can set them up in the settings to output a maximum of plus 9 or plus 24 dBU. 
The latter is a proper professional line level signal, which not many interfaces can deliver. If you run this signal into devices that expect a lower level, you can also send plus 9 dB and then the noise floor is shifted down as well, meaning that you essentially get the same dynamic range in both output modes. That once again shows the attention to detail here and I have no doubts that the outputs of the SSL18 are transparent. Now you might think that the headphone outputs are just two plain headphone outputs like on many other interfaces. Well, you thought wrong. SSL once again had to give them additional features and I mean that in a good way. Here you can see that there are three sets of measurements for the SSL18 and that's because in the software you can set the headphone outputs to standard, high sensitivity and high impedance. These modes tailor the outputs to different kind of headphones. The standard mode, as you can see, is mostly green and it will work with the majority of headphones. The high sensitivity mode is designed for IEMs or very sensitive headphones. Here you trade a bit of output power with a lower noise floor, which guarantees that you will not hear any noise from sensitive headphones. And high impedance truly cranks up the maximum output to 11 and this allows you to drive even high impedance headphones to loud listening levels. These modes will always give you the best performance, regardless which kind of headphones you prefer. And all that while keeping the output impedance very low, frequency response super flat and distortions down to a negligible level. And the left and the right side are always equally loud because the gain control is actually digital. All in all, I'm very impressed with the headphone outputs on the SSL18. I think they are one of the best outputs that I've tested so far. Hats off. You thought I was done? Well, if that wasn't enough, you can also switch the headphone outputs to work as fully fledged line level outputs in case you don't need headphone monitoring. That's true versatility. Okay, let's have a look at the software as there's quite a lot of functionality available here as well. Here I'm showing the SSL 360 degree mixer panel and it gives you an overview of all your channels, including level meters. Functions like the 4K mode, phantom power and high pass filter can also be controlled from the software. For both your headphone outputs and alternative speaker output, you get a set of dials, all in the shape and form of an audio console. You can also stereo link channels and control their pan for each individual mix. At the bottom, there are the control for your main mix, again with volume faders, pan controls and solo slash cut buttons. You can also toggle to see the additional playback returns and digital channels. Right next to that, you also get your talkback settings. Further to the right, you get to see your output level and further controls. And at the far right, you get to control your classic settings like sample rate, loop source, and mono, dim, as well as alternative speaker trim. The settings tab gives you additional options that I've partially covered before. Things like the headphone output mode or inserts can be set up here. There are some additional metering options, button customizability, as well as the output level for the line outputs. And of course, you can also save your mixer settings as a profile to easily restore it later. You might have also noticed that there is a virtual effects console panel here. What happens here is that when you are in a support door and add an SSL effect, the effect will show up here. So this panel essentially gives you an overview of all your SSL VST effects in one convenient place. One thing to highlight is that the effects on the SSL360 are not processed on the hardware of the interface, but like any other VST effect on your computer. That should do it for a general overview. If you want to have an even closer look at the software, I highly recommend to check out the video uploaded by Solid State Logic themselves, as they've done a great job of showcasing all the ins and outs of the software. And last but not least, there is a bit of a surprise in the form of round trip latency. This is important, especially because there are no effects that are processed directly on the SSL18. And so if you want to monitor with effects, the audio has to be routed through your PC and this is where RTL comes into play. With lower sample rates, I was genuinely surprised to see comparatively high latency. Now, don't get me wrong here, this is easily below 10 milliseconds and with most cases absolutely fine and not noticeable. But some people might be a bit more sensitive to latency and I would have liked to see an RTL below 5 milliseconds. If you need to lower latency, you can disable safe mode, which slightly improves times with an increased risk of crackling audio. Or you can use higher sample rates, which also improve latency figures. Not sure if SSL can tweak the numbers a bit with a firmware update, but RTL is something where the SSL18 is slightly worse than competing interfaces at least at lower sample rates. All in all, I really like what Solid State Logic has done with the SSL18. The audio quality is excellent through and through with ultra low noise preamps 
excellent dynamic range on all in and outputs and distortions are inaudible with all connections that the SSL18 provides. And on that note, I'll start with the pros of the SSL18. You will find that the SSL18 offers a lot of flexibility with its I.O. and combines a couple of features from other interfaces. For example, the DC coupled outputs you can also find on an Arturia AudioFuse 16 rig. The SSL18 also offers two channels of send and return, which lets you insert hardware effects into your signal chain. If you need more channels, then you might want to check out the Audient ID48. And the list goes on with the little things like being able to turn your unused headphones into additional line outputs or the option to tailor your headphone outputs to work with IEMs or power hungry over ear headphones. You get a separate input for talkback so you can still use the other channels and the software offers you a console style control of your mixes and routing and the overall build quality is great. Things to consider are that the controls are hardware only controls. I know that many of you will like that, but for the ones that prefer a more hands-off approach, you might wanna have a look at the Focusrite 8924th gen or Audient Evo 16, as they can be controlled remotely via software. There are also no effects like EQ or compression that are processed directly inside the interface, which you can, for example, find on a Moto Ultralight Mark V. And lastly, the round trip latency could be a bit better. I mean, it's still fine, but especially in this price range, I would have hoped to see a better performance with low sample rates. All in all, I have to say the SSL18 does a lot of things and it does a lot of things really, really well. Audio quality again is excellent and if you're looking for an audio interface as your studio centerpiece with many helpful features and a bit of SSL console vibes, then I can absolutely recommend the SSL18. Please give this video a thumbs up, subscribe for more and I will see you all in the next one.